Yeah. And keeping everything clear like this really um, uh, keeps the sexual energy flowing freely. It's a lot Your sex life should be something that you nurture and grow and um, uh, keep alive. The 100 year old woman was being interviewed and the reporter asked, at what age do you lose your sexual desire? And she said, you're going to have to ask somebody older than me. And it's not true that things get worse as time goes on. We've been together. It's a lot of times uh, people, people, you know, in the conventional world, they think that, um, well, you know, you hear all these jokes about, and everyone just assumes it's common knowledge that, uh, well, in your relationship for a long time, the sex starts going downhill, or you're an older person, the sex starts going downhill. And 20% 20, 20 of relationship, 20% of married people, I don't know where they get these statistics, because nobody's ever asked me. But anyway, 20% of um, married people are supposed to have sex once a month or less. 10% are supposed to not be, have sex anymore at all. They're more like um, brother and sister relationships. And that can be true. But I, uh, Greg and I both believe that that's because people aren't clearing. They're not staying clear in their throat chakras. They're not staying clear in their lower chakras. They're not staying alive. They're not staying vibrant. They're not um, keeping the energy clear with talking about stuff and staying on purpose, spending time together, and s connecting sexually. And if you do that, sex can become better and better and better and better. And this is not known at all in the conventional world. This was known in the East, in Tantra, and in the Taoist traditions, was that sex was a lifelong endeavor. You could learn the uh, arts of love so that lovemaking in later years was even better than when you were younger. But this isn't in the conventional Western framework at all. So part of what we're teaching in, ta in our Tantra workshops is that your sex life should be something that you nurture and grow and um, uh, keep alive so that uh, it gets better and better. What was that joke you told me about the 100-year-old person? Oh, God. I saw someone, <laughs> someone was talking about seeing a 100-year-old woman being... It wasn't a joke. It was real, it was right? It a joke. Yeah, there's an actual interview. Someone was talking about this interview they saw, and they said this 100-year-old woman was being interviewed. And the reporter asked, at what age do you lose your sexual desire? And she said, you're going to have to ask somebody older than me. <laughs> I love that. I look forward to that. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, what you were saying is absolutely true. There is no such thing as a honeymoon period. So not just your sexual relationship, your personal your relationship between the two of you, if kept clear, and if you have some agreements in place, on how we are going to communicate and how we are going to interact as a couple, then there's no such thing as a honeymoon period. That is a myth. It's not true that people start tiring of each other if they love each other. And it's not true that things get worse as time goes on. We've been together almost two and a half years now. And it's every bit as good and even better in a lot of ways than when we first got together. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. That doesn't so. take a lot of effort. It takes avoiding some mistakes, some common mistakes that people make. Yeah. And it takes a little bit of effort. People don't work on their relationships as hard as they work in their jobs in many instances. Mm -hmm. you know, that's true. Uh, a lot of clients I work with, when you ask them something that's going on, a lot of times it's something like, well, I get very impatient with my husband, wife, spouse, significant partner, significant other. Okay, do you do that with your boss? No, I don't. All right, then you have given yourself permission to be unkind to this person. Right. I know in previous relationships that will come up. Yeah. I just had a guy tell me the other day that he um, he and his wife don't have a sex anymore because he's not attracted to her because she put some weight on. And Greg and I were both like, that's not why. That's not why. There's something else there. There's something else there. They're not talking or he's not really in touch with his own sexuality. He's not, um, he's not, they're not sitting and feeling each other in, in embodied. He's just looking with his eyes because in the Tantra world, we can often feel and see the attractiveness of everyone. That doesn't mean we're going to be with everyone. But part of what we learn and practice is everyone is a very attractive being. Once you sit down and be with them and get to know them, we do exercises. We did these at the ashram, and I do them a little bit in, in our, my workshops, our workshops. But 
mine and ours, where we actually sit and look into the soul. You know, the eyes are the, what do they say that? The eyes are the windows to the soul. Yeah, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So we sit and really look in the other person's eyes, and, you know, you cannot help but fall in love with someone if you really connect with their soul. That doesn't mean it's going to be your partner. It doesn't mean you're going to go home with them. It may or may not. It's really irrelevant from that moment of really connecting. So if you really have that moment of connecting with someone, love is going to be there. And I think we need more love on the planet. So we strive to uh, teach people how to be more loving, strive to become more loving myself, share more love in our relationship. Yeah, and when we walk into some place where there are a lot of people, we're going to be doing some kind of work, like some sort of uh, retreat or workshop or something. We know that pretty soon we're going to be in love with the people in that room. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We went and did a weekend workshop out in, in uh, Joshua Tree, and we walked in and we go, hmm, well, it won't be too long before we're in love with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a tough life being in love with everybody, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what... Uh, if you like this content, was... make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there for some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time, have a beautiful, blessed day.